Hey, it's Joe, and this is the third installment in the Quant Trading and Futures video series. Today we'll discuss common quant trading strategies. So I've grouped the strategies into five categories. Momentum, mean reversion, statistical arbitrage, term structure, and alternative data. We're going to go through many different examples today. I want to make it clear from the onset that I'm not endorsing any of these strategies. Just trying to give relatively simple examples of strategies that are representative of the category as a whole. We're going to begin with momentum. Momentum follows the assumption that if the market's been rising, it will continue to rise. And if the market's been falling, it will continue to fall. It is a buy high, sell higher type of trading strategy with the goal of profiting from herd behavior. It's characterized by many small losses and a few large wins. The momentum trader is looking for the big move. Big moves don't happen that often. So there's going to be a lot of small losses, but the momentum trader is hoping that the handful of large wins will dominate a multitude of small losses. This is a favorite of the CTA industry, commodity trading advisor industry. So much so that from 2000 through 2009, the correlation between trend following CTAs and the CTA index at large was 97%. And indeed, momentum strategies have worked very good with commodities in the past. Now, that relationship has waned the past five years or so, but momentum trading in futures is still very popular. Very simple example of momentum is simple trend following. So the algorithm of buying if the end month return is positive and selling if the end month return is negative has just one parameter, N, I list a few parameter sets there for you. And the intuition of the strategy is that the end period return signifies whether the market is in an uptrend or a downtrend. If it's in an uptrend, we want to be long. If it's a downtrend, we want to be short. The assumption is that the direction of the trend will continue. This is the same assumption as with the moving average cross that we looked at last time. And indeed, that strategy also falls under the momentum umbrella. Next, we're going to look at mean reversion the opposite of momentum. Mean reversion follows the assumption that if the market's been rising, it will reverse and begin to fall. If the market's been falling, it will reverse and begin to rise. This is your classic buy low, sell high type of trading strategy. The idea is to profit from overreaction and panic, large price moves that are going further than they really should. In contrast to momentum strategies, mean reversion strategies tend to be characterized by many small wins and a few large losses. Most of the time, things do revert to the mean. Not always, but most of the time. So there will be a multitude of small wins that the mean reversion trader is hoping will dominate a handful of large losses. Mean reversion is most commonly used in the stock market. It's more common in the stock market than the futures market. As we touched on earlier, in the futures market, momentum strategies tend to be more popular. But my flagship trading strategy does fall under the mean reversion umbrella, and it is a futures trading strategy. So it most certainly can be done. A simple example of a mean reversion strategy is using the relative strength index. So the algorithm is to buy if the end day RSI, relative strength index, falls below the threshold T, and sell if the end day RSI rises above 1 minus T. Two parameters here, N and T. And this RSI computation, its goal is to identify situations in which the market has become overbought or oversold. If it's become overbought, we want to be short. If it's become oversold, we want to be long. Again, betting that the price is going to revert. Next up is statistical arbitrage. These strategies trade multiple markets against each other in a market neutral fashion. So they're hedging out exposure maybe to a sector, or in some cases even to the specific market it's trading. And the idea is to profit from mispricings of assets relative to each other, rather than momentum or mean reversion where you're trying to predict the movement of just one asset. These strategies, you're predicting the movements of assets just relative to one another. Characterized by many small wins and a handful of large losses, just like mean reversion, these strategies are more applicable in the stock market because there's a lot more actively traded stocks than there are actively traded futures. Remember, only about 50 actively traded futures, and there are up to 5,000 actively traded stocks. So in the stock market, there's more stuff you can trade against each other. 
StatArb is a favorite of large quantitative hedge funds. In particular, long-term capital management was one such hedge fund who traded StatArb strategies. Unfortunately, they used too much leverage. They blew up waiting for the reversion. So there can be large losses. If you're not careful, they can be too large. But StatArb still, the, these strategies tend to be very sophisticated and they're very popular amongst large quant hedge funds. Classic StatArb example is Paris trading. So in this algorithm, you're trading two related markets. We'll call them M1 and M2. You buy M1 and sell M2 if the current price difference, M1 minus M2, is less than the P percentile of the price differences over the past N days. I'm going to sell M1 and buy M2 if the current price difference is greater than the 1 minus P percentile of price differences over the past N days. Strategy has two parameters, N and P. So this algorithm is definitely more complex than the previous ones we've looked at. It's a little bit harder to understand. But the idea of it is you're looking at the spread between M1 and M2. If this spread has narrowed, you want to buy the spread. So that means buy M1 and sell M2. And if the spread is expanded, you want to sell the spread. That means sell M1 and buy M2. Betting that the spread itself will revert back to its historical average. Next up are term structure strategies. Term structure strategies trade based on the relationship between different expirations of futures contracts for a given market. So the trading decisions will be based on, for example, the difference between the July corn contract and the November corn contract. The idea is to profit from differences in futures risk premium. So think back to video one when we talked about the futures spot parity equation. I said that the price of the future is equal to the price of the spot times some multiplier that includes things such as the risk-free rate and the cost of carry. Well, the cost of carry can actually be influenced by the positions of hedgers. So a common term structure strategy is to look at the term structure, i.e. look at the differences in the prices between futures of different expirations and use that to back out the cost of carry and use that to back out the positions of hedgers and then trade against the hedgers because the hedgers aren't trading based on any expectation of where the price is going to move. They're just trading because they're trying to hedge out their risk. So often contracts are traded against each other, such that the trader is totally hedged for movements in the overall market. So back to this corn example, if you buy July corn and you sell November corn, if the overall price of corn drops or if the overall price of corn rises, it doesn't matter. You're just concerned with the relationship of the July corn relative to the November corn. So in that sense, term structure strategies can be thought of as a subset of StatArb strategies. These are only possible in the futures market and most commonly in commodity futures. You can't trade a term structure strategy in stocks because stocks don't have a term structure. There's just the one stock. And these strategies are a common strategy of prop trading firms. An example of a term structure strategy is trading based on the slope of the term structure. So the algorithm is to buy the end markets that have the smallest slope of the prices of the contracts expiring within the next M months. So the smallest slope of the term structure, these will be markets in backwardation. We want to buy those. And sell the end markets that have the largest slope. These will be markets in contango. Strategy has two parameters, N and M, which is the number of markets and the number of months we're looking at. And the idea behind this strategy is that when markets are in backwardation, hedgers are net short. And when markets are in contango, hedgers are net long. So we want to trade against the hedgers and capture the risk premium they pay to hedge. And finally, we have alternative data trading strategies. These strategies make trading decisions using an outside, non-price data source. Many times it's proprietary, it's unique, others don't have access to it. And the idea is you have this special data, this special source of information, and you can use that to trade. Now the problem with these strategies is many times the data didn't even exist maybe five years ago and even if it did it's very very difficult and expensive to acquire so in that sense alternative data trading strategies are difficult to backtest over a long time frame but nonetheless if you have data that no one else has and it is indeed predictive of where the market's going to go that is of course extremely valuable and as such alternative data trading strategies have been growing in popularity amongst hedge funds 
we're going to look at an example using the COT report. The COT report is the Commitment of Traders report, is released weekly by the CFTC, and it breaks traders into three categories commercial traders, hedgers, non commercial traders, which tend to be money managers, and non reporting traders, which tend to be retail traders. They don't have to report because they're too small. And this strategy will buy if the percent change in the position of non-commercial traders, i.e. the money managers, is greater than some threshold T, and sell if it is less than negative T. Just one parameter here, T. And the idea is very simple. You want to follow the smart money. We're theorizing that the money managers are more informed than the hedgers and the retail traders, so we want to trade with the money managers and against the hedgers and retail traders. So that's it for this video on common quant trading strategies. Next time, we're going to look at performance metrics, ways you can evaluate a trading strategy.